So there's a lady in labor and she is not progressing and that is established by the midwife on duty. In this video we will discuss the possible causes for prolonged labor. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Spalo and this is Open Conversations on Your Health, Your Life, where I equip you with the information that you need so that you will be comfortable and confident on your next doctor's appointment and or hospital admission. In this video, we'll be discussing the possible causes of a prolonged labor. Before we can dive into exactly what could be the cause of a prolonged labor, I'll start by telling you and explaining the working relationship between a midwife and a doctor. Pregnancy in and of itself is a physiological process, which means that it is completely normal. It is what the female body was designed for. So most pregnancies progress without any issues. And midwives normally attend to mothers from the antenatal services up until a woman delivers. However, sometimes disease processes can complicate pregnancies. And at this point, doctors also are called to participate in the management. So in the context of labor, when a midwife assesses that there is some sort of a delay, at this point is when a doctor would be called to assess and find out what the possible cause could be. And in this video, we will properly go through how a doctor would come to the understanding of what exactly the problem is. And that is where the three P's of labor come into the discussion. The first P of labor is the power. So it is important to understand and establish how good a woman is contracting, right? And this normally is done by just a palm of a hand pressed against her abdomen and the strength of her contractions will be monitored. That is the duration that they last. So normally there should be about three to four contractions in a duration in a time frame of 10 minutes. Each contraction lasting for at least 30 to 40 seconds to be considered moderate to strong. Yeah. So if it is found that a woman is not contracting well enough, at that point, a doctor would be able to understand this and a drug could be administered via um, an IV. That drug would be oxytocin, which then would increase and strengthen her contractions. The second P is the passenger, the little baby. So you should know that in order for a baby to be delivered from the birth canal, that the smallest diameter of the baby's head needs to pass through the largest diameter of the pelvis, right? And in order to allow that to happen, the baby needs to sit in the pelvis in a particular position. So any change to that ideal position could cause some sort of delay. And so that is normally assessed with vaginal examinations. And afterwards, a doctor would be able to assess and establish what to do next, right? There are some positions that cannot be delivered vaginally and at that point, an operative delivery would then be performed. And the third P is the passage. So the passage is also very important and this is where childbearing hips plays a role. As Africans, we are actually quite privileged in the fact that most of us have what is referred to as a gynecoid pelvis, which is the most ideal for pregnancy. However, there are some individuals who find themselves with much uh, narrower pelvis, right? And so that pelvis then could possibly complicate labor in that the baby would not be able to pass through or vice versa an infant could be too big in proportion to the pelvis being completely normal and in this in this case a woman would then be diagnosed with a cephalo pelvic disproportion which means that the infant's head is not proportional to the mother's pelvis and also at this point an operative delivery could then be considered all right, so those are the three P's that would go through a doctor's head when assessing a lady who is not normally progressing while in labor. So there's one more P which is not normally added to the conversation, however, I think is the most important in regards to a woman in her preparation for labor, and that is psychology. And I think it's important that during the pregnancy, a woman is preparing herself psychologically 
for labor that she has the support around her whether it be from her friends her family her partner it is very important that everyone around her is giving her the good encouragement that she needs so that at, when the time comes she is mentally prepared for a vaginal birth and of course sometimes the situation can be completely out of our hands but it is always important that whichever whichever mode of delivery in the end that will happen that a woman is mentally there right because pushing is something that is is a lot of work and a woman at that point needs to be mentally up for the challenge yeah all right so as always thank you for watching this video uh, like the channel subscribe share it with anyone that you think could benefit and share with us any stories that you have of your labor experience was it prolonged did you ask why what happened feel free to let us know and just have the conversation going thank you for watching